here's a micro from Benchmark Sams. Today we have a special guest and a special topic. A long time no see here on the uh, interactive maps horizon, so to say. So uh, a couple of months ago, or maybe a year ago, uh, I got a call from my friend Tech, which is our guest today. Hi, Tech. Hi, Micro. How are you? I'm good, man. Hopefully you are good as well. Yeah, doing really well. Uh, thanks for inviting me here. Cool. So, uh, as I said, uh, one year ago, I think, uh, maybe maybe you know better, uh, we had a conversation about, uh, yeah, uh, bringing the uh, interactive maps back to life. Yeah, uh, we started this one year ago, and I think uh, uh, we have, uh, till today, we have to show you guys some, some progress and uh, why you should use the interactive map and, 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 and using it heavily for your briefings, for your mission planning, etc. For everybody who don't know the interactive maps, um, they are uh, supported on uh, the Falcon BMS website. So when you are clicking on the uh, Falcon BMS website, um, you see here in the top header, uh, the, the uh, menu entry maps. If you click on it, you land on the interactive maps landing page. Uh, we have an interactive map for each official supported BMS theater for KTO, for Balkans and for uh, Israel theater. And just to show you uh, some features and possibilities, we just uh, uh, let's uh, use KTO for uh, uh, for our test run here. Um, so if you want to open an, a theater, you just click on this uh, little image here, and you basically land on the KTO interactive map. I would say uh, let's uh, take give us a little overview of what we can see here. What uh, are the basic features, and maybe we uh, can talk about about the fun stuff as well. Okay. Yeah, obviously, when I started, uh, I wanted to get access to the airport information quickly. So the way the development worked is to kind of go from the basics. So let's start here with kind of how we developed it over time here. Uh, so if you select probably from an airport from the top list, it gives you a breakdown of all the airports, airstrips for the different countries. And then if you pick something like Incheon uh, or, or yeah, our let's, favorite Gunsan. Let's, let's move uh, in, let's move to Incheon here. Yep, then it you know, highlights it on the map. It sends us the map around that airport so that you don't have to search for it. And then you can click on it to get the basic uh, airport information. Um, so you get the location, elevation, all the radio frequencies. So if that's all you need, which is a lot of the times when I fly, I have this as my digital kneeboard. Uh, sufficient during flying, but if you need an airport or you have an alternate or you have an emergency alternate, then obviously you can quickly click on the map and bring up the airport information. So you can either click any airport diagram or you can just kind of move on to the next feature. So yeah, it's just uh, just to show you, you know, like we have all diagrams here, all charts uh, with uh, what you have in your docs folder are here uh, as well. Uh, right. Okay, go ahead. So that's kind of the basic uh, features that you want to access where you can just jump around from airport to airport. Then obviously there's a basic panning, zooming in and out. Uh, so you can zoom in on an area by clicking on the zoom icon. If you want to zoom into the maximum or maximum in or out, you can use the shift key. You can try that, like max zoom in, hold shift, there you go, and out. So that way you can quickly zoom between max in and max out. And then you can just drag and pan uh, you know, the map around wherever you want to look. So that's the basic map feature. Um, the default bullseye is placed here. Uh, during mission briefings, you can actually move that around so you can discuss where you would like to have it placed. Uh, and that's kind of the basic feature. After that, we go into the flight information, the route information, and then later on the whiteboard where you can make annotations on the map. Um, so if you have an, any like call sign or I ready, we can maybe Quickly uh, provide that and drop that on the map. There we go. Okay. All right. Once so once you have the uh, INI file selected from your folder, uh, you can drag it on there. Typically, what I do in a mission, you know, you save your DTC card, you go to user config, and you pull in your call sign dot um, So here is a flight. Um, then you can obviously look at the uh, the lines, the threats, uh, pre-planned threats are shown uh, here on the map. Uh, you can see the route that's being flown. 
you can see where the actual strike uh, areas are for the steer point six, seven, and eight. And then if you want more details, you can click on the route compass uh, underneath the bullseye icon. And this allows you to step through uh, the mission. So the mission time itself is always set to 9 a.m. because that's not part of your call sign on any. So if you want to have it start at the proper time, uh, you can update that. And also if you have durations that are longer at a particular hold, for example, I think the default is four minutes. And for refueling, it might be 20 for a whole flight. So you can change that and the uh, time on station will be adjusted as well as the speed if necessary. So yeah, you can step through. Uh, you can see in the notes below um, the whether or not who is the, the AWACS and also the landing airport. And so you can step all the way through until you hit the, the landing point. And if you have alternates, you can also see that as well as the refueling as a part of that. Uh, you can see three tabs here. One is the route details. Uh, it's kind of like BMS. You can click radio, which shows you all the frequencies that are currently active for your particular flight. All the 20 presets, uh, the little abbreviation for uh, which agency you're talking to. And then on the mission, there's some uh, calculated information, the total flight distance, estimated duration and estimated fuel, and also the uh, rough bingo calculation, uh, which is taking into account if there is bad weather, good weather, etc. And then if you had saved uh, detailed targets for steer point 80 to uh, 99 for your particular uh, call sign out any that would show up here. And that's pretty much the, uh, the route. Then measurements, which is also one of the basic features. When you make it active, you can click anywhere on the map, drag the measurement tool around and it shows you the heading and it shows you the uh, distance from the point of origin that you clicked on. So this kind of gives you an idea if you want to measure from your takeoff point the maximum directly far away, uh, you can kind of get a feel for how far away you're going to fly. You have to make an emergency that doesn't follow the flight path. Uh, so that's things what you can use that for. Um, so the next part is going to be the whiteboard. So there's you know, several different things. The whiteboard has the uh, command and control symbols, uh, drawing capabilities, text, and obviously an eraser. Uh, the pencil settings we're looking at right now uh, allows you to set the line style or for freeform. So we can pick maybe a red color if you want uh, for line style. Yep. Go. And then maybe pick a blue color for later on fill. Uh, so, yep. And then set the fill to solid, otherwise it leaves it open. Okay, so just drawing, um, just draw some freeform lines like arrows. Uh, just dismiss the, uh, dismiss the dialog first, yep, and then start drawing. So you can draw freeform. Uh, if you hold the shift key, you can draw lines. There you go. And if you hold the control uh, key, you can draw, uh, you know ellipsis uh, and now you see that we have a red line and a blue filler so if you want to flag and mark uh, patriot uh, coverage errors you can do it that way for example Very nice. then besides the uh, annotations you can add text uh, annotations on this layer and so you can click anywhere and you know type you know what what uh, threats you might encounter or if the carrier is there and then obviously there's the eraser button where you can, you know, if you have committed something to the whiteboard, you can get rid of that section. So, and you have control fully of the size of the eraser as well. Uh, the command and control symbols take a little bit more work. Uh, there's a standard, a mill standard. Uh, like, can you click the armory sword again? Yep. So you can pick symbols if you want to provide more SA using the official mill standard 2525D symbology. Uh, you can pick the identity and symbol set, and then you can select if you want to show infantry. Uh, click on the infantry. Yeah, the mode set modification sections I didn't implement yet. But if you click infantry, yep. like the menu, yeah, you can pick air defense, and then what it will do is pick, for example, air defense. Mm -hmm. It will change the symbol to the official, and it also gives you the official symbol uh, identification. And now if you dismiss the armory, you can place the uh, enemy uh, air defenses on the map without having to you know, draw your own symbols. So this way you can provide more SA. Uh, you can provide symbology for, if you go back here quickly for the C3, there's land units, there's air units, 
and then you can pick obviously hostile friend foe and then you can pick bombers fighters you can place those and then you can also place uh carriers and combatant ships if you switch to sea and air if you pick that from the type and the carrier yeah there you go and so that's kind of the quick overview uh then let's quickly jump into the uh weather uh so a big part of the f uh of the interactive maps is to give you weather information so if you have a uh, maybe a day eight uh 1400 zulu f map available yep okay so after uh dropping your f map file uh there's different options you can pick for what you want to look at uh, the weather so here you can see the three different layers actually active the whiteboard, the weather, and the uh, mission information from your call sign out any. And so here you can nicely see the clouds rendered, uh, coastal clouds, uh, marine layer that's pushing in from the ocean on the east. And if you want more detailed information about an airport, you can hover over it and get the tooltip to get the METAR uh, here. Let's go to Sokjo, like there, a little higher. Yeah, for example, and here you can see you know, the wind information, visibility and here it's currently metric 2400 feet or 2400 meters and there is mist and overcast at 1700 feet temperature is uh, zero and minus two is the dew point and you get your pressure information and so that information is calculated for every airport uh, on the map so you can get more details about the weather uh, the weather itself like we have here is just the clouds if we go to the settings uh, we'll talk about some available options there uh, let's first talk about the visibility. So you can turn any layer on and off. So if you don't want to see the bullseye, you can hide that. If you don't want to see the mission, you can turn that on and off. And if you want to have the weather temporarily off, you can do that. And obviously the whiteboard. Uh, and then if you want to see the latitude and longitude coordinates, you can. Uh, that's by default off. You can now see that. And it also gives you the X, Y uh, input on the map in pixels for the uh, actual mapping uh, that I used to verify. Cool. So there was those settings. Uh, then you can pick whether or not you're you know, working in Europe or in uh, Americas with Imperial units. So right now, temperatures and everything, the default is metric. Uh, right now, if you leave that on, it would get you Fahrenheit and pressure in uh, inches of mercury. You can pick uh, the wind information, uh, but let's first change the weather map itself from clouds to the options that we have. So the first temperature gives you a kind of a weather channel look. This is really showing you the BMS uh, weather types from sunny all the way to inclement, those four types. Uh, so sunny, partly cloudy is uh, fair, and then poor is cloudy, and then inclement is rain. Uh, then we can switch to the next one to winds and obviously this is very helpful when you have a uh, bombing run with dawn bombs uh, to figure out how you should make your run in uh, currently the winds are visible for the surface but if you're dropping at a particular altitude you can switch that so if you switch the uh, wind altitude to maybe let's say 24,000 then you can see the winds are much stronger at that particular altitude and it shows you nicely the official wind barbs and the wind direction uh, across the map and then the next thing is uh, on the weather is the uh, the isobars which gives you an indication for pressure systems uh, if you see low pressure which we don't see here but anything below a thousand four might be thunder areas uh, if you see pressure bars close to each other uh, it means high wind velocities uh, but I use this actually to figure out where I might expect thunderstorms uh, by looking at the pressures quickly over the map. So it looks pretty sunny, high pressure, so good weather here uh, to fly with. Then we can go to the next chart on the weather. You get the Doppler, and that this one is used to see if there's actual rain cells and thunder cells. So currently there's nothing visible here, uh, so we don't have to worry, and we could already see that from the pressure system. Yep. And then the last one is, again, the clouds that we were uh, working with. So I wanted to continue here. Um, sometimes you want to have a better contrast. If you're flying at night, uh, you can switch the map filter uh, from default to night mode. That darkens the uh, map itself, and it also brings the contrast of the clouds more out. The other option is uh, 
Grayscale, I use it a lot for making uh, screenshots and documentation where there's only printing in black and white, so it's already pre gray grayscale. And then if you want to have a little bit more color or look, making it look like a different contrast, I have the Sapphire as a, as a filter. And so this is kind of the, all the basic features. Um, so when I give briefings, uh, we didn't set up anything here, but we can discuss that here. Uh, what I typically do is uh, show different layers. So you can make a, a, um, a whiteboard version that you can save. So you see the three buttons underneath here. The save button will save your whiteboard. So you can click that. It goes to your default uh, downloads folder. And if there's already a whiteboard, it will automatically make it whiteboard one, whiteboard two, whiteboard three. And so it only saves the whiteboard information. And to reinstate it for a briefing, you would just drag and drop it from your folder and drag it onto the map. Uh, maybe maybe I can uh, reopen another session just for testing. So Yeah, so if you want to reinstate it, uh, you just select your whiteboard and drag it on there. There you go. That's cool. And you got your annotations back. Um, you can also stack different whiteboards. If you hold the shift button, uh, if we don't have any other whiteboard, that's OK. But it allows you to first say, OK, let's first focus on land units uh, from the enemy or first focus only on hostile units before you show all the friendly units. Mm -hmm. And you can also drop a, you know, your wings logo somewhere on the map. Uh, that's cool. Uh, to start off with. So you can kind of create a slideshow uh, with the briefing as you drop layers by either stacking or replacing it. Nice. So that's currently uh, all the features uh, and a quick overview that I have. And then obviously you can clear the whiteboard with the uh, back arrow and then a total reload uh, button. So we don't have to do that now, but that's what these features are for. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, like things that we're planning to work on here um, is to get more terrain information in there so that I can make 2D plots of the flight route. So that's not available yet, but currently as you look at the flight route, you can tell, you know, what altitude you fly based on clouds or terrain, uh, et cetera. And so I'm, I'm planning to make a 2D plot of your velocity and altitude with the, the cloud layers and terrain underneath. Um, also working on a manual that in detail describes everything, quirkiness, uh, how to use it on different uh, kneeboards, iPads, iPhones. Um, so I tried to design the UI to fit for all these different devices from desktop to uh, small phones. And then another feature I'm thinking about is to create weather animation. So if you drop multiple F maps that you can have an interval mode where you kind of cycle and see how the weather develops over time. Sounds great, man. Yeah, so that's kind of, uh, and then maybe also the uh, VRP and VIP uh, attack runs. Uh, that's currently not visible here, but that's in the DTC, obviously. So I'm thinking about based on your initial point to actually add that and give that also as a visible information on the map. That's pretty much it, uh, Micro. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, that's uh, that was a great, uh, great talk through and a great overview uh, thank you for for being uh, yeah, interested in this and uh, helping the community to to have a, a even better interactive map than we had before and uh, there's a way to go and i think we have uh, different ideas and uh, yeah uh, all we can say is use the interactive map uh, as a briefing uh, tool or as an mission tool whatever so it's pretty, pretty uh, versatile for a lot of needs. And uh, hopefully, yeah, you enjoyed the video. And thanks, Tech. And see you soon. Yep, thanks for inviting me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.